turning windows up and down, it's just because it's getting a bit smoky, mate. Getting that's steamy. We're getting steamy. We're getting steamy, mate. <laughs> We're getting steamy, right? Let's do it then. So, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a brand new Ray Good Road Trip. Uh, and I'm joined by none other than John Robb. John, Hi. thanks for your time, mate. How are you doing? You all right? So you you're you're known for being a journalist, author, singer, songwriter, TV pundit, all them kind of all those type of things. What's your favourite thing to do out of all that these days? Well, uh, play on the stage, play music. Live. Yeah, it's just because it's so. Uh, it's, you can't get more in the middle of, of music culture than actually playing music. Yeah, and people in the crowd getting into it. Yeah, it's adrenaline rush. It's just a perfect moment. It's ace. Yeah. yeah. Well, we're going to come to your gig that you've got at the Ritz yeah, next yeah. Saturday, mate. We'll come yeah. to that in a bit, though, because you've got a yeah. great big gig coming up in Manchester soon. But um, you know, I, I first became aware of John Robb just seeing you wheeled out on the telly, just being a journalist on the BBC and all that kind of stuff. Um, you're a musician. You're into your music. What what is your passion now? Your um, well, what is your passion now? Oh, well, it's, music's always very central. And this, yeah. Sometimes you, you spend a couple of months and you don't hear anything you like. Yeah. And suddenly, then you hear something so amazing it just completely obliterates you again, yeah. doesn't it? So I mean, that could be a new record or an old record. It could be a new bands, old bands. Anybody just, you listen to right now that you got that feeling from? Well, they, I'm putting out a record by a band called Glove. Glove. And they're great. It's just two women who play this amazing, amazing music. One plays like a tom, one plays a bass, yeah. and she does all this poetry on top. A bit like Patti Smith across the okay. states, but really engaging as well. Yeah. I reckon you can put from any crowd and they'll, they'll get into it. Yeah. You know, some people just have that thing where everyone's drawn into it. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't have to be conventional, it could just be brilliant. I think I'm, I'm like that with the blinders at the minute. Oh, the blinders are ace, aren't they? Yeah, yeah we were on just, them right from the start. Yeah, we had yeah. them on the last road trip and they're just like, we went down to Fallowfield where they, they moved from Doncaster to Manchester and we were drove around where they grew up and that kind of stuff. Yeah. Just great guys, just proper. No, great great guys, great bands, you know. Great, great. There's a whole wave of great bands. Yeah. Homes. I just did a little piece of the estate. Right. You know, I mean, it, it's not a scene because all these bands come from different places, yeah. but idols, Fontaine's DC, Blinders, yeah, yeah. go back a little bit to sleep for Mod Slay's yeah. Fat White Family. The, the bands don't share, it's not, there's no such thing as, I hate putting things into scenes, but they share a common yeah, audience, yeah. you know. I just want to say, look, music didn't stop, and you know a lot of people my age would say music stopped in 1980 or whatever. <laughs> well, this is the best wave of British guitar bands has been for years, you know, yeah. and they're all in the top 10 of the arm charts. I mean, something's happening out there. And nobody's put a finger on it yet. And it's, it's, it's exciting, there's more bands coming through in the back of that as well. Well, I saw that in the uh, Louder Than War manifesto that I read this morning. You know, it, you, you've got, you, you're not just covering the big bands like the big magazines do, like the Enemy no, and that kind of stuff. It's more we don't what care. You, talk, you say. If we like a band and we put it up there and only 10 people yeah. read the piece, I don't care, we'll put yeah. it up again. You know, yeah. it's, uh, I, I know some websites, because it's, I mean, I, I know we're stupid, because really we should, be, we should be putting the biggest bands on there to get more yeah. money off the ads so we can survive. We're always yeah, yeah. about to go bust all the time. <laughs> yes. Because, because we're, we're blind music fans, you just yeah. get in something, you write about it relentlessly. Yeah. There's people on my site write about some, some music that's totally uncool, you know. There's, yeah. a, there's a thing this morning, I mean, I, I don't, I am the boss of the site, but I don't put everything up there. Yeah. So there's a thing this morning turned up by the Emerson Lake and Palmer box set, which yeah, you yeah. just go, wow, that's quite, <laughs> <laughs> I've never think of that. You know, but I like that. Yeah. I like, yeah. I like looking at my own website and I don't even know what's on it half the time. So I, I like that kind of anarchic spirit. So what I what I'm really want to ask you really as because I've started RGM this online music magazine thing that's turned into what it is how, how did you how do you how did you build a successful team really um, people just come you know people come as yeah. writers and they want to get involved yeah. it's, it's all voluntary it's yeah, a bit, same it's, here, it's yeah. like an Oxfam shop yeah 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 <laughs> like, you know the old biddies behind the counter but we're, we're exactly the same it's just hard work to pay people innit there is so, no money for, is there yeah. I hate not paying people because I, I'm, I'm I'm old school yeah I'm slightly on, on, on the left kind of thing where everyone should get paid yeah but there is no money I, can't, I don't get paid no one gets paid yeah, yeah, no, yeah. in fact half the time I'm paying for it to keep it going yeah me too <laughs> yeah no, I, is, I feel that yeah which is fair enough it's not a charity I don't expect like it. even like things that people don't appreciate like server costs and oh, yeah, just yeah. to keep it's the Thing going and, and that kind of stuff, which is really been around for a long time. So we've got a yeah. huge site which costs a lot to run, yeah, know? yeah. But it's all right, it's, it's not a plea of poverty, that's just the reality of things, you know. And we get our rewards by, um, you know, the blinders was a reward for us because we worked yeah. so hard at getting yeah. them known. We put so many live reviews and interviews yeah. and them up, and it, then it started to roll a bit, yeah. And just because they're a really talented band, we rolled properly after that, didn't yeah, we? cool, cool, yeah. Well, because there, there used to be a lot of money in the music industry. Um, have you got any stories of any flash times in the music industry when there was a bit more well, money the, flying uh, around? 
when I was writing for Sounds back in the uh, late 80s, uh, yeah. 90s, you used to get flown to America all the time, yeah. a few bands. I went to America twice in one week. Wow. But I was always, I was skinned, so you'd be in LA in a really posh hotel with <laughs> right. no money. Yeah, okay. You'd actually like, you'd be walk out, you'd walk out the hotel and think, God, I, I don't actually have any cash. <laughs> I remember right. getting back to Manchester Airport and I couldn't, yeah. I couldn't even afford, you couldn't get a taxi home. I had just enough money to pay for the bus, but the bus was only to halfway. Yeah, though. right, okay. So I, just, I had to pay for like half a ticket and I hope they didn't catch me. <laughs> right. And that, that was a weird thing because you'd be going all the way around the world yeah. with no money. Yeah. Yeah, which is a fantastic like, lifestyle, but ridiculous. Danny Baker, yeah. ta Danny Baker talks about that a lot. When he worked for the NME, NME yeah. they used to fly, fly him out to speak to Michael Jackson and he didn't have a pot to piss in. No, He couldn't even afford you, to go out for a drink after and all that kind of stuff. You get 70 quid for a piece. <laughs> no, that would be it. You know, it's, the photographer's got... Uh, being a photographer, what I learned in the end was I should have yeah. taken photographs because right, okay. I should have just bought a little camera and taken photographs of everything I interviewed. So even a bad photograph yeah. of Nirvana. In the really early days, when I interviewed a, a really fuzzy crap photograph, yeah. would be worth money now. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Whereas my article is just, people just take bits off the internet and it goes round and round the internet forever. Were you one of the first person to interview Nirvana? I was the first person. The first person I didn't realise they did a book of all their interviews. Yeah. Mine's, mine's the first wow. one. And I, and I got in touch with the person who wrote the book and said, surely there must be somebody else in <laughs> yeah. And he said, no, yours is yours the first the one. one. Wow. Yeah. How did you prepare for that? Uh, well, it's just, a, it's just a local band interview, really. So, I yeah, mean, not because I was local to them, but I, yeah. I rang them up and it was like, What's your name? Where are you yeah. from? What's it like? Yeah, you know, it's yeah, one of those. It's, it's one a of those green interviews. Thing. Yeah, okay. yeah, because there's nothing. What would you know? I'd only heard one song. Yeah, but I loved the song. I thought his voice was like made a voice from hell. It was amazing. And then six months later, we went out to New York to interview them, and they played to ten people. Yeah. in uh, wow. Maxwell's, not Maxwell. Yeah, Maxwell's in Hoboken. Amazing gig and trash all again. A four piece, yeah. different drummer, another guitar player in the band. I mean, we stayed with them three days in a flat in New York because when we were in Sounds, no one ever got us hotels. We yeah. had to stay in the band. Yeah. And enemy used to laugh at us for that, but you know what? It was better. <laughs> yeah. Because we, we were actually part, we we're in the crew. So yeah. now to this day, I've got a uh, hanging out in Nirvana three days story. Didn't meet for 20 minutes. I mean, yeah. we slept in the same room as them. Wow. You know, we, we helped carry their gear up and down three flights of so stairs. What, what, so, like. Uh, Obviously, Nirvana now is just this big like myth band that was yeah, just one like of the incredible. Most important ten bands of all time, but to me, it's really weird. They just seem like a, a in my head, they're still like this kind of weird little band that yeah. I like. You know, because you can, you know, bands are always freeze freeze frame in the moment you got really into them, yeah. aren't they? Yeah. You know, when I see kids about fourteen walk around with Nirvana t-shirts, and I think, oh god, that's that band, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> well, they it's just like. When, when you've been a musician and you've been around music for a long time, I've been around the industry for like 10, 15 years, I've been in fail bands and that kind of stuff, you, you kind of get a, a vibe from a band, so did you, did you, uh, what, like, what vibes did you have around a band that came to fruition, if you know what I mean? Oh, if they're going to be big or not? Yeah, if it, um, could, you, could you just tell with some of them and then it just happened, or? It's, it's not often, I, I, I don't really work in A&R, so I didn't work in things yeah. that I like. Okay. Um, I suppose you could always, you always felt the Stone Roses were going to be big at one point, yeah. just because, um, just because Ian Brown had that thing, you know, and also because Rennie, Rennie in the early days, such an amazing drummer. People used to go and say, say to each other, you have to see this band because the yeah. drum was amazing. That was their ticket yeah. in the early days because there was no nobody else in town could play drums properly apart from him, you know, at that level, you know, of unknown bands, or whatever. But Ian Brown had that charisma. But you thought. Is there a way through? The Smiths are already the, the guitar band for the North. There's not yeah. space for two. You couldn't see how another band could get through. So I, I'm not that good at A and R. I just, I just think I, I, really, I just did it. In fact, Nirvana, I couldn't see them being. We used to say they'll be as big as Sonic Youth. That's yeah. what we thought. Oh, okay, fair enough. I don't think anybody's meant to be bigger. I remember yeah. the album came out and the record label pressed so few records. Yeah. It went in the charts and dropped out again. Right, okay. And they had to scramble to press them all up. Well, we did. Uh, I, I think I've got a bit of a knack for it. It's, there's little things that you spot, and professional professionalism is one of them. Um, when it I, I, doesn't always make a great band, though. No, but <laughs> uh, the first time I noticed it when I played in a band, and a little band from Sheffield supported us that night called the Arctic Monkeys. Yeah, and it yeah. was their first ever gig that they played, and they were the first band that got everybody out of the the room for the sound check, even at that young early age. Uh, and they wanted their sound to be the best that it could be from day one which I just found interesting. So I kind of look out for that trait in a band, really, just to see how serious they are about actually being in a band rather than just well, doing that, it for the it love does of it. It does help if you've got that drive. Yeah. And you rehearse every day and all that stuff. But a uh, genius could be fleeting, can't it? I mean, you, yes. can get, you can get somebody who's really untogether, he's completely brilliant. Yeah. Sometimes I want, what that needs is some the people around that person to, to build the wall yeah. to, to keep them <laughs> safe and away. Yeah, it? sure, yeah. Yeah. Well, what's been your most like awkward interview throughout 
speaking to all these but uh, Mostly they go people. pretty well. Was it, was, I think Mark Smith was always difficult, but yeah. it, was just, it was just a boring game with those kind of people. Yeah. It? They always try and be. I, 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 some people I just rather listen to the records. I yeah, think okay. Sometimes they don't always have an awful lot to say. So they, just, <laughs> okay. they, they cover it up by being difficult, don't they? Yeah. Yeah, you, I, you I get that. It, yeah, you get that a lot with like young you bands now do, that want an yeah. interview with a magazine. I'm just like, well, it's fair enough. We'll we'll have a go, but I just have you got somebody? Have you got a story to tell me? I don't think it matters if it's a young band. I don't expect a young band to have anything. To yeah, say. sure. If you're an old band and you, you start, you've been difficult in interview, you think, well, don't do the interview. Yeah, you know you don't have to do it. In fact, keep a wall of a steak up. Yeah, like the Rosies never do interviews. Yeah, you know? that's it's quite a cool idea. That. Yeah, it sort of floats somewhere in the distance. Well, there were there were a band called October Drift. Yeah, yeah. That started off uh, without any social media when social media was just massive for everything, uh, and all the ad was just the logo, the big O with a tick on it, and they started off being really mysterious and that kind of stuff. They eventually did do the social media thing and they've grown to what they are now. Um, but yeah, I think it's a, it's, it's a good idea to be mysterious as a band, isn't it? And just it try help, something different. It? Yeah. I think some people are good at interviews, some people are good at explaining what yeah. they're doing. Some people aren't that good at it, so sometimes it's best not to say anything. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. I don't think people have to explain. I, I yeah. love the way Peter Hook has no idea how Joy Division got the sounds. Yeah. They just came, they just started playing just started it. Just started playing, yeah. It sounded good, that's it. You know, there's no... Something that's really magical to people for yeah. generations, to the person making it, could be something they just knocked off on a Wednesday yeah. afternoon. Yeah. I think that's great as well. In fact, some ways, when people have no idea how they made it, it's even more like it's just a spark of genius, just a, a, yeah, a, no, a lightning strike just happened at that one moment. No one has any idea something. where it came from. Yeah. But some people totally have an idea, they know how to keep repeating yeah. it, don't they? What's, um, I was down at Alan McGee's Q&A session down at Breadshed the other day, Yeah. Um, and uh, I asked him a question, I said, as music press, as, you know, having his responsibility to support people, uh, what... What more can we do as music press to support the music industry? What, well, no more. We do what we do. We write yeah. about stuff, don't we? It means we find stuff, we write about yeah. it, we enthuse about it, we tell other people about it. Yeah. There's nothing else we can do, is there? But it depends. Music press is different. There's all different types of music press, yeah. isn't there? Yeah, so sure. I mean, our end, your and my end, is more the fun thing, isn't it? We yeah. find the stuff, we, yeah. we push it out there. Then you get the... Um, the kind of other writers who like to do their big pompous overview of things. Oh God, right, yeah, there's nothing worse than seeing a really 2,000 word review of a band, is there, when it's well, just no, like, I, I, I like <laughs> do you like that? Okay, fair yeah, enough. I like it, if you've, got, if you've got something to say, say it. Yeah. If You you know, sometimes a live review could just be like, wow, and a, a yeah. YouTube clip, that's great. <laughs> right, okay. Sometimes if, there's, if, if a band captures a moment and the, the audience, the whole thing's in the room and you think, wow, yeah. this, this, there's a change, there's a youth quake here, yeah. then write about it, yeah. you know. Everyone's got a slightly different clothes on, everyone's got a slightly different attitude, yeah. they've changed the way things are, you know. I've been in rooms when those moments have happened, you know, yeah. when, when you feel pop culture changing yeah. overnight. 